Yes, of course. Uh, so much of it is virtue signaling. And you know what's really interesting is that so much of the modern social justice phenomenon is fueled by that sort of egoistic, atheist uh, perspective where the only god on the planet is you. Uh, this sort of runaway, rampant humanism. Uh, you know, the only god is you, and it's sort of driven by narcissism so often because you're, you're, the moral structure that you erect around yourself exists primarily to satisfy your own ego and to uh, and your own demand for affirmation from others. The dopamine circuits in your brain and the social reward circuits that remind you that you're a good person, that you're a righteous, upstanding, you know, sort of morally virtuous kind of person. All of this is from where social is, is where social justice comes from. And what's really interesting is the the response to all this, and there will be a response to it fairly soon. The backlash against, you know, the racial grievance politics in America, against the feminists on campus, against social justice warriors of all stripes, is going to be a uniquely Christian response. It's going to be a return. It's going to be, it's going to be a move away from arrogance and that cult of the self and the sort of arrogance of, of the social justice uh, lunatic back to a more sort of uh, a more Christian humility and uh, openness. It's going to be a move away from the sort of furious ignorance of Black Lives Matter's protesters and into um, compassion and love, and it's a very, it's a very interesting, a very interesting sort of um, thing that's happening now as you start to see people sounding like Christians even if they don't realise they are, as they ex- as they try to struggle through their objections to social justice, or they try to explain to you what they find objectionable about um, you know campus feminists, and they begin in in the language that they use, which is about you know. Um, intellectual humility and compassion and searching for truth. They sound remarkably like people of faith, even if they wouldn't describe themselves like that. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, you know, I think it was with um, Dave Rubin, you sort of described atheists as thin-skinned and easy to wind up. And that that was funny. They're the best. They're the best. It was so funny to hear you say that because I grew up in a very religious environment, which was a world where there was this sort of this underlying idea that atheists are completely logical and reasonable and you know that it was almost as intimidating that they were on this higher level than us and then someone like you comes along goes oh they just you know you sort of just laugh them off and i'm just like look people this is a sort of professional atheist like reddit atheists you know the militant type of atheists you know they the, whether or not they believe in god is quite far down the list of, of characteristics you know they first of all have to wear socks and sandals they then have to you know have phenomenally thin skin like hair trigger temper wispy beards and normally ginger ponytails and you know there's all sorts of characteristics <laughs> that these people have before you get to whether or not they believe in god whether or not they believe in god is almost the least uh, the least important thing about atheists um you know they're extraordinarily thin-skinned and you know they're, they're sort of they're arrogant obnoxious self-righteous superficially factual claims to some kind of uh you know devastating truth about the world uh, about how the world is well First of all, they don't stand up to scrutiny in the final analysis, or at the bare minimum, you get to a point where you have to just, you know, take the leap of faith or not, in which case there's not really a logic cannot really speak to that. And second of all, you look at the world that the atheists have created. Look at what's happened to culture since the churches weren't running things. You look at St. Peter's Basilica and compare it to Tracy Emin and Damien Hurst. You know, you look at the glories and wonders of even of, of Islamic architecture and compare that to, you know, abstract expressionism, much as I like Rothko on, on occasion. Uh, you, know, you look at the, the great wonders of the architectural, musical, philosophical, and literary worlds and compare that to the drivel and tripe and crap that modern artists and modern art galleries put out now. And you know, this sort of awful state of, the, of public morality, the terrible lack of lack of belief and trust and faith in institutions and history and family and society and in each other, the, the, the sort of scepticism and, and suspicion with which we all regard each other. And tell me that atheism has built a better world, because I don't see it. Yeah, it's, it's funny because I've sort of heard the sort of argument put forward that, and, and I've I've experienced it to be true, I think, in that in atheism's absolute rejection of religion and focus on religion to sort of deconstruct it what it's ended up doing essentially is mirror it like to to emulate it of course well there's nobody more dogmatic than an atheist aren't they aren't they they're like missionaries atheists aren't they they're determined (laughs) to convert you 
They, yeah. <laughs> all, I mean, literally every criticism they have ever levelled at religion is more true of them. Whether it's dogmatism or blind faith or, um, you know, or, or you know, the need to convert or the damage done to society. And, you know, everything that they say about religion is more true of them. They are thin-skinned, hypocritical weirdos. And look, I don't mind if somebody doesn't believe in God. Frankly, I don't care. But when they turn into the, you know, this sort of... Maybe I should care, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I probably should care. I should be out there on the I think subconsciously you do, but... Well, I probably... <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Uh, I pro no, I, maybe I should be out on the street with leaflets and a megaphone, but it's not my style. Uh, I prefer YouTube. But uh, you know, the, the, I sort of don't care if somebody doesn't believe in God or not. It's you know, and but but what I I find endlessly entertaining is when is when you sort of do a little five minute segment as I did with Dave Rubin, maybe eight minutes, saying oh, basically, you know. Atheists are so thin-skinned. I mean, you know, aren't they just funny to wind up? And then you get in the comment sections, how dare you say we're thin-skinned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> this is typical. Typical is a religious bigotry. How dare you say we're thin-skinned? I just... <laughs> <laughs> there is so there is much lack, irony in that. There's a lack of irony there, unseen since the height of the religious right in America. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there is a lack of self-awareness there, like, <laughs> like oh I've never gosh. seen. Um, yeah. you know, and I just find them very funny, very angry people who, um, you know, what it is. I've I've read some studies on this. And many of your listeners will find this offensive, but as, as we've established previously in the show, I couldn't give a shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you give me license to swear now. You told me Gavin. Oh, go said, go nuts, go nuts. You, you see, you see, <laughs> I'm not going to drop the C bomb on you, but there may be some F, there may be some Fs coming. Um, no, I'll try to avoid them. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, I've lost my thread. What was I going to tell you about? Oh yes, I've seen some studies that uh, that, that show a high degree of of correlation between autism and atheism. So if you're the sort of person that can't really relate to others, you might be quite smart, but you don't really understand feelings or emotions or how to relate to other human beings, you're far more likely to be an atheist. Now, this rings very true to me. If you look at how religious people behave, a sort of communitarian, um, you know, so the parish aspect of, of worship, the, I mean, the whole the whole concept of, of the congregation, the way in which religious people tend, seem, tend to look out for one another, uh, look after one another, back one another up. There's, obviously, there's a wonderful, strong sense of community in you know, almost every religion is, is about community. And, so, and you know, is it second, secondary or tertiary tenet is about the flock, the faith, community, whatever. Um, and it's not surprising to me that people with autism or, or on that spectrum somewhere, retreat into atheism because they don't understand other people because they can't they can't wrap their heads around the compassion and empathy and love that is required for faith. So, in a sense, not for all people, obviously, but in a sense, you know, I think there's a large proportion of atheists who are really only atheists as a function of a, of a psychiatric condition they have, uh, which is that they can't, <laughs> which is that they can't relate to other people. Atheism. Yeah. Atheism, according to that reading, is a sort of brain disease. You know, it's, it's, you, can't, you can't relate to other people. You don't understand human emotions. You have to learn them like a sociopath. And you sort of retreat into atheism because you see no value in altruism or compassion, love, community, or understanding with your fellow man. Well, yeah, of course, you're going to retreat into this dull, lifeless, pointless, anodyne, you know, ugly, empty, vacuous creed of atheism. 